Okay, we're going to make a little mold in here and go on the bottom of the cabinet. This is the OG bit. We're going to cut a profile on the edge of this board, then we're going to split it. Uh, uh, we're going to mount this mold and it'll be on its edge instead of laying flat. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Excellent. Let me get around here where I can show this to you, maybe. Okay, this will be our profile. And we'll take it over here. I'm going to calculate how much back I'm going to cut. Because I'm going to, I'm going to set a smaller piece of molding on top of this. But this is actually mounted on the cabinet, so I'll, I'll show in the video what I'm talking about when I put it on there. I think this is, like this is going to work out just fine. Okay, we've, uh, we've implemented some design changes in the cabinet for the fish tank. Uh, not major, but uh, just a little bit. We decided to add some feet. The customer said they really liked that, and so uh, I'm going to give them what they want. So uh, I've made one pass on this thing uh, and I didn't have the camera set up and I happen to think well I, I better document that they'll uh, want to see all that so here's the profile on this what board. I'm cutting this profile with is part of a uh, handrail shaper cutter. Uh, I had a customer some time back that was uh, remodeling a home and they went up to the local home center there and wasn't any handrails that they liked out of the out of the species of wood that they was working with. And uh, so uh, she called me up and said, could I make some handrails? And I said, why sure. So uh, I just went ahead and invested in a shaper cutter to do that with. Anyway, this is this is not the full profile. This is only part partial uh, partial profile of it. Uh, because like I said, I'm going to use this to make feet, but this is going to make a, a pretty, pretty nice looking, pretty nice looking foot when we get it down and get it cut and, and put together. Anyway, let me swing the camera around here and show you the the shaper cutter. If you can see it uh, on the shaper, I've got it set up here. Like I said, I've already made one pass uh, before I realized I needed to shoot a little video of it. Let's see if I can zoom in here and we can keep it in focus and make it look like anything. Uh, you can see it a little bit there. Uh, it's a, uh, like I said, it's just a, it's a cutter for a handrail. If you was doing some snares, get that off of there. And just a little cover there to keep the, help keep the dust down. But, uh, uh, it's, it's hard to see the entire profile. Part of it's down below the table and, uh, hid in behind the feather board. But anyway, it gives you some kind of idea uh, how sometimes you can use cutters and bits and things like that for more than one function. Even though it was designed to make handrail, you just pull it down there a little bit in the table and only use part of the profile to cut what you need. Uh, and like I said, this, this cover here just to help keep the the chips from flying out because it does make several. Of course, it won't. It won't this time since I already made one pass with it. But anyhow, I'll go ahead and uh, let this go right here, and uh, we'll make the final pass, clean it up. And be ready.
That's our final pass. Uh, I did cut this one in two. Now that I've, that I've got set up and we're good, uh, the rest of them I'll just cut in one pass. Uh, that's, that's one of the things I love about using the shaper. It's got uh, three bit cutters on it, and uh, the whole thing is just massive. Uh, you uh, you get you keep your shaper cutters good and sharp, and man, you can you can cut it in one pass. But anyway. So now I've got to set the, uh, the depth set properly and everything, and we've got the profile that we wanted on the on the board. Now I'll take it over here to the bandsaw, and I'll cut this out, and then we'll uh, cut some miters on it, and we'll turn it into a foot. All right, now I'm gonna I'm gonna sidetrack here just just for a minute, uh, and uh, and put something here that uh, really don't pertain to making the uh, making the cabinet there, but. This is this is a, just a little bit about this machine right here. It's a shop smith, and uh, uh, me and Laney was talking about it the other day, and I, and I was telling Laney that uh, that I use mine a lot. Uh, you get a lot of reviews. Some people love them. Some people hate them. Uh, some people say they wouldn't let them in their shop. Uh, a lot of people use them that don't have a big shop, but don't have a whole lot of room. Uh, I got this one. I, the reason I've got this one, I bought it at an extraordinarily good buy. And to me, everybody's different, but to me, I don't think money could buy a nicer drill press for woodworking. There's a whole lot more that's heavier and, and uh, probably stronger and that sort of thing. But you put this up there and you've got a, you've got a really nice table with a fence. Uh, it works super. It, it was worth more than what I give for it just for the drill press feature alone. But I use it, it's, it's my lay, uh, and uh, it works super as a lay. Uh, then there again, you know, if you was doing much bigger stuff, it would probably be not that great. You'd require something bigger. But anyhow, it works great as a lay and a drill press. Uh, and I've got, the, uh, I've got one of the bandsaws for it. And I keep a little quarter inch blade on that bandsaw where I don't have to change on my big bandsaw so often. So that works out great. Uh, it's not one of the very best band saws that there ever was, but for the for a small saw running a small blade, cutting small stuff, hey, it works great. So anyway, I just wanted to put that in there and show a little bit of it here. And uh, I, in fact, I've got it set up here as, as a lay. Uh, <clears throat> I was making something the other day and I cut it off and I just left it. And uh, so I'm gonna. I'm not going to make any changes other than slide the headstock down and connect it up to the bandsaw and then cut out this foot for this cabinet. But anyway, I wanted Laney to see that simply because me and him was talking about it. Uh, he was talking about a lay and first one thing the other. And I told him if you look around on eBay or Craigslist or something, you might find a deal in one of them. You can, you can find them used pretty often. So anyway, uh, with all that, I'll spin it around here and let me see if I can back up here where we can get the get the whole operation in the, in the thing right here. And all I'm going to do, so you can see I've, I've set up here, or I was set up here, still is. Uh, I was using it as a lay. Of course, I've got the tool rest and set up here, and I, and I was turning out. Of course, it was just a short piece, but uh, I was turning it out. So I just left it when I got done. So now I'm just going to slide the headstock back and connect it up to the bandsaw, uh, and then we're going to cut out those foot. So that's where all there is to that. Uh, of course, I can uh, let me get over here where we can see a little better. Now we'll get the bandsaw in the picture, and I'll cut out this foot. Uh, I've got the shop back to, to it, and. It'll probably make a whole bunch of noise with the shop back are running, but uh, uh, a little dust collection. So I'll uh, I'll turn it on and cut this out.
Okay, now here's one piece of it. Uh, still don't look like much, kind of crazy looking, but we'll take it over here and uh, mark this other end of it and cut it out. All right, now we've got this other one marked and we'll cut it out. Take it right down here. Pull this up and run on around here. We'll take it right down here to the spindle sand and we'll. Ooh, we're gonna have to, gonna have to change out the spindle. Looks like I got the wrong size on here to do it with. Not a problem. Thanks, man. over here and cut some miters on and then we'll put them together and it'll turn into a foot I'll, uh, <clears throat> uh, ain't no need to, I don't think me showing the miter cuts and all that uh, I'm probably gonna cut these on the bandsaw and then just take them over to the uh, sander and uh, sand the miters a little bit and then put them together so uh, I'll be back okay I got a I guess I got a little bit carried away there uh, this is the first project that I've done where I've tried to video and document the whole thing. I, I had been doing these videos for just a little bit. I'm not that good at it. Anyhow, uh, I, I just went ahead and uh, 
Now, when we went through the steps, cut that foot out. <coughs> Excuse me. And I went ahead and cut the rest of them out and, and, and glued them up and made the feet, and I've got them attached. Uh, I got some of them. I like one more having it attached. Uh, but I've got them attached to the cabinet, and uh, I'll spin it around here and see if we can see if we can get it here. It's upside down and sitting in the floor, so uh, the camera. Yeah, there we got focused up on it there. So basically, all we did, I uh, I cut a, I cut a groove, this half inch groove around the leg, and I cut me a half inch square here to go in that groove. Of course, I mortised it <coughs> and then glued it together. It's glued up here and it's got a uh, disc inside here. You help me line it up. And then it's glued and anchored to this plywood square here. And then, then after that, the whole assembly is uh, got four screws and then the whole assembly is glued to the bottom of the cabinet. So what I did this, what I did that for was to give it extra support here. Like I said, we're after the weight, but they wanted the feet. Uh, so it's not going to be like it's moving around. All the weight's just going to be compressing these oak boards. And these, of course, these are not plywood. These are these are oak. But it's just going to be compressing, so it's going to be a setting there. So anyhow, that's that's the feet. Uh, and then I, I cut out a center one. That's not something you normally see on, on something with the feet on it like that. You see them on each corner. But there again, we've got the post on front and back. It's going to help hold the weight. So I, I come up with a design for a foot right here that let it sit directly over it. And it, and it would hold the weight in the middle of the cabinet. And uh, that, that whole assembly is glued and screwed together. Of course, across the back, where, where nobody sees it, now it's an entire, an entire board back here. Uh, with no need to break it up, make feet, can't see it. So, of course, there'll go one. There'll be one going that end. Let me come around here. Uh, maybe we can see this with the clamp on here, uh, or not. Okay, there we there we can a little bit. Anyway, that's that's the front and the back foot, and I realize they're not they're not much room between them. But that was uh, uh, that was kind of the customer's choice right there. Uh, our main thing was to stay with the strength, uh, so uh, that was the best that we could come up with and still make it look okay. And I think when it gets uh, when my glue dry, gets dry and I get the other side on it. Get the whole thing assembled, then set back up on a table. I think it's going to be. Uh, I think it's going to be fine. So anyway, there, there we are with the feet on. Uh, like I said, I this is kind of new to me, and uh, I probably skipped along too much. I don't know. Uh, the request I had for it to, to be documented, but at least we can get a step or two in the whole process. But we, uh, I've got this other one glued up here, and I'll put it on and glue it. And then when all that gets dry, uh, naturally I'll be done with the bottom. We'll cut some molding to go on around the top, and we'll put the top on it. Already got the top made. We just got to position it and get it like I want it, and cut it to size. And uh, I can put a profile on it and put our molding. And then we'll build some doors. <laughs> 